Hi guys! Still us, Francesco Enrico and Marco. In our first video we told you more about oxygen itself, although there you can already have a bit of taste on the rationale behind it. But now, I'd rather explain to you the contribution that our software is aimed to have into the hardware acceleration counter. So, supposing that you want to speed up your C or C++ algorithm that on CPU runs super slowly and you don't like that. Let's see how to deal with that and different solutions you can go for, comparing them on performances and design time. First step toward high performance computing is the exploiting of multi core and multi thread architecture. This is done trying to parallelize critical parts of the process, compensating in this way the lack of performances due to the sequential execution of operations typical of single thread CPUs. But commonly, the more performances you want, the more design time you need, and also the more energy consumption you have. Anyway, the effort spent is not so worth, then let's see if we can do better. For example, you can rewrite your software considering the usage of a GPU to compute the most critical parts of your algorithm. Performances are great on appropriate datasets, and if you're skilled enough with high-level languages, it shouldn't be such a big deal to write programs using their proprietary languages. But mind you, that if you have a complex code, while you think how to parallelize it, the design time increases. Furthermore, they dissipate a lot, decreasing the power efficiency, and therefore they are not the best solutions in certain situations. Now, the thing here is that running software on an architecture is quite slow, as there is a certain overhead due to the fetch, the code and execute phase that all destruction should go through, and so on and so forth. Moreover, if an architecture is general purpose, it cannot be optimized for any algorithm. Here, you may think about speeding up anything, just getting rid of the control overhead due to the management of the software running, replacing anything with your own hardware architecture that doesn't need software anymore. This means that, depending on how you design your architecture, you can draw the best performances out of there, but anyway, the design phase would take more or less forever, without many chances of decreasing it. So, now, we should maybe do a step back and try to decrease the design time considering reconfigurable devices like FPGAs. File programmable gate arrays are devices composed of a set of hardware resources which are spread all over the device and that can be reconfigured according to the algorithm to be developed. Then, you still need to build your custom architecture, but not from scratch, and that's great. So, the deal is a lower design time for lower performances, but there is a reason why it's worth. It's worth because if you use an FPGA you can have a high level synthesis tool, easier design phase, considerably decreasing the design time even more. High level synthesis tools take care of managing most of the hardware related issues in an optimized way, letting you program the device with high level languages similar to the most common ones. However, also using high level synthesis tools, you still need to take some decision that you might not want to think about, or learn new syntax, design paradigms, tricks and so on. Then, here comes Oxygen that does it for you, taking your C code and interfacing with the best high-level synthesis tools. In this way, Oxygen, thanks to these tools, provides a solution with better performances compared to the CP1 you started from, but without moving the design time. Oxygen wins because it allows to implement on FPGA the hardware version of your algorithm with no more effort needed than writing its C version. Pretty easy, isn't it? If you got interested in our project, get the link with us on our socials for any update, release, rumor and more. Bye!